Is three years old too young? You shouldn't do anything with him until he's at least seven years old, my friend was told. You'll cause all sorts of damage. He just isn't ready for a rider before then. But she didn't want to wait that long. Her beautiful two-year-old bay gelding would make 15 too, so the breeder had told her. He was intelligent and playful. Would she really ruin him by working him now? When we should back our youngsters is a complicated and emotive issue on which I have strong opinions. This quote from a study titled The Response of Bone, Articular Cartilage and Tendon to Exercise in the Horse is published in the Journal of Anatomy in April 2006. It gives some idea of just how confusing it is working out what the right level of exercise is for a horse in terms of his musculoskeletal system. Acquiring further knowledge on the optimal exercise regimes for each tissue, including number of cycles, peak force, how often delivered, age range when delivered, will assist in deciding what should be regarded as normal activity in a control exercise regime in research, in determining the duration and features of rest in athletic training programs, and in defining the characteristics of exercise which animals and people should undertake in order to attain, retain or regain health. Basically what they're saying is that we don't know what normal activity is for a young horse, let alone what level of activity training might involve. There's no standard level of activity for a horse on rest either. And I think that's where a lot of the emotion stems from. You see, I strongly believe that we should be training our horses from a very young age, right from when they're a foal, including introducing weight to their backs. I believe this because it's widely recognised that the musculoskeletal system responds to the stresses placed upon it. You'll know this anyway, because you, or a friend, will have been to the gym or taken up running, swimming, cycling, or some other form of exercise in order to build muscle and or rehabilitate after injury. Studies on both humans and horses have proven this effect. If we want our horses to adapt to being ridden, then it's our responsibility to give their bodies the best chance of doing this. And in my opinion, we can do that through giving both the brain and the body the time to develop according to the stresses and strains put upon them. Of course, this needs to be done in the right way, and therein lies the problem. What is the right way? Is there, in fact, a right way? One issue, I think, is in what people think of as training. For me, the training would be gradual and low level. For a start, the youngster would be turned out as much as possible. The research is clear that it's better for the young horse's musculoskeletal system if he can move around. I would work the young horse in hand, on different surfaces, at different speeds, in different directions. I would introduce him to a wide variety of equipment, environments and experiences. In the process of backing my horse, I would introduce weights incrementally beginning with the weight of a teddy bear, for example, and gradually increasing them over the months and years. My training sessions would be short-lived and varied. Introducing new aspects of training slowly means that the horse's brain can adapt and learn, as well as his musculoskeletal system. Even something as seemingly innocuous as the size of the paddock your young horse is turned out in and the companions he has in that area could have an effect on the development of his musculoskeletal system. Being turned out in a large area with several other horses, including youngsters who want to play, is going to get your horse moving around a lot more than being turned out in a small paddock with only his mum. Having different surfaces in his turnout area, including, for example, sand, gravel, pebbles, rocks, grass, with slopes and flat areas, and both dry ground and wet ground, is likely to cause different development to that of the horse who's turned out in a flat paddock 
with a consistent surface throughout. So before we judge whether or not a horse should be backed at three years old or younger or older, perhaps we could take time to consider the evidence around gradually introducing stress to the brain and to the body, as opposed to expecting the horse to adapt both mentally and physically in just a few weeks as a four-year-old. Perhaps we could think about some of the many factors involved in exercise that aren't necessarily thought of as training. Perhaps we could recognise that the jury is still out on exactly what level of exercise is the most beneficial for a young horse and what precisely the definition of a young horse is. If you have or have had a youngster, what route did you choose and why? Who influenced you in your decision? Are you pleased with how things are or did work out? Or would you do things differently in the future? As always, I believe that we are all doing the best we can, given the knowledge, tools, skills and experience that we have at this moment in time. There's always so much more to know. I wonder where our knowledge will be on this in five years time or in 15 years time. I hope I'll still be listening and learning with curiosity and compassion. Brought to you by Sue Palmer, thehorsephysio.co.uk. Inspiring curiosity, communication and connection. Find me on Instagram at Sue Palmer the Horse Physio or as the Horse Physio on Facebook and YouTube. Thanks for listening. I really appreciate your time. I know how precious it is. Happy learning.